Hey guys, it's Brie, and this is a subject that I've wanted to talk about for a really long time, and I finally got the perfect reason to bring it up and do a video, maybe for good. As you guys know, I have a new job, and it's coaching, modeling, and acting to kids. Basically, I teach kids age 4 to 24, modeling and acting, and I really, really try to focus on self-confidence because you can't be in front of a camera or on a runway if you don't have confidence. Teaching all these kids, honestly, I have really, really gotten to love them. Like, I feel like I'm Auntie Brie to some of these girls. And the thing that I hear the most often from girls around middle school age is that they're bullied. And these girls are gorgeous and talented and have so much potential and I hear time and time again I'm bullied people are mean to me I can't do this anymore I guess I've gotten caught up in my own life I'm 26 I'll be 27 in a few months and I have forgotten what it was like to be a kid and I'm just gonna say it being a kid sucks I know every adult is gonna tell you oh being a kids wonderful you don't have any worries no no in all honesty I would rather be 26 years old and then 13 any day. Of course, as an adult, we have worries. We have to pay bills, we have to go to work, but it is nothing like that dread that you feel in the pit of your stomach every day when you wake up before going to school. When I was in middle school, I was bullied beyond belief. Every single day, I would just dread, dread going to school, and I would have this feeling and a tightness in my chest and in my stomach, and I just didn't want to wake up the next day. And I know what it's like to just think, oh my god, I'd rather be dead than have to face those people. <laughs> when I was in middle school, of course, you guys know I have naturally very, very big curly hair, and one of my favorite colors is black. My favorite, favorite color is pink, but I love black, and I would rather wear the color black than wear the color pink. So I went about two years straight, and I only wore black, and because of the big long curly hair and always wearing black, all these kids in middle school decided that I was a witch or possessed by the devil, depending on the day. And these kids would literally throw things at me and they would tell other kids not to talk to me. And there were a many a day when I would be sitting alone in the cafeteria because people thought that I was really possessed by the devil and that I was gonna kill them with voodoo magic because I was from New Orleans. And I've also told the story of when I decided, okay, I'm not gonna wear black today and I bought this rainbow colored t-shirt and I thought it was the cutest shirt ever. And a group of like five or eight people gathered around a big circle and started pushing me around. They pulled my earrings out of my ear and they called me a faggot. I really, really was alienated and bullied every day. And after the being pushed around and called a faggot incident, my grandmother woke me up and it was final exams. So I couldn't miss the day. And my grandmother said, I know that you don't want to go to school today. And I said, no, I would rather do anything than go to school. And she said, want to go to California? And my eyes just lit up. And she had my little Snoopy suitcase packed. And she said, we are going on a plane and we're going to California and we're going to go shopping and we're going to go to Disneyland and we are going to have the best week ever. Forget about your exams. Don't care about that. We're going to go have some fun. So my grandmother and I did get on a plane and looking back, it was probably the best day of my life. The fact that I could get away from people calling me names and being mean to me and my grandmother is the most wonderful woman in the world because she was there for me. Oh, I like, I can't even talk. It makes me want to cry even thinking about it. I'm 26 years old and even thinking about the way that I was treated when I was 11 and 12, like, oh, it makes me want to cry now. And it just, for me, it got to the point where I couldn't stand it. And I know what that's like. I know what it's like to wake up and just not want to live and hate it. But I don't want this to be another, like, it gets better video. But it does. I decided to change schools. I was in a different school back then. And then I moved back to New Orleans. And I still was that girl that loved to wear black and loved to go off in the corner and read Shakespeare. And that's not, like, the cool thing to do when you're 15 and 16. And back then, there were so many other kids that were stealing beer from their older brother and going out and having little parties, and they thought they were the cool kids, but I didn't want to do all that. I've never drank before, ever. And I always thought deep down that I am meant for something bigger, 
that I'm gonna do bigger things with my life. So I don't want to be the drunk 15 year old. I really, really focused on what it was that I wanted in my life and who I wanted to be. And I wanted to be a role model even back then. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a role model. And I wanted to be a person that other people could look up to. And then I went to college. And I had always wanted to go to Tulane and I got in. And I met the most wonderful group of people who were like me, who liked theater and who worshiped Shakespeare and who loved things like that. And we had this little room in college called the green room where all the theater kids hung out. And I have never felt more at peace and more welcome and more at home. And even so many of the professors were kids like me who understood what it was like being a college student and who knew what it was like to feel alienated. And it was like this bubble of happiness when I went to college. And when you're in middle school and you're looking ahead, the next day seems like eternity. In college, it seems like, oh my God, that's never going to happen. But you do get there, and it was so wonderful for me. And I had so many wonderful experiences in college. College really did pave the way for what I wanted to do in life, and that's be an actor. And now, as an actor, achieving my goals, looking back, I would love for a 26-year-old me to go to 11, 12-year-old me and give me a big hug and tell me that it gets better because it does. It really, really does get better. And then when you're actually in the career that you want to be, oh my gosh, when I walk on a movie set and I'm with fellow actors and crew and people that understand what it's like to have this passion in the bottom of your soul and to pursue it so long to that's what you do for your life, you meet people and you love them and people love you and it's just this feeling of complete welcomeness and I really can't describe it and I just I don't want to keep saying it gets better but it does and kind of a funny story the last time that I went to teach in I think it was Georgia I was on a plane and this guy kept checking me out so funny I thought oh, that was one of the main guys that would throw things at me and make fun of me and bully me and that guy really really made my life a living hell back then and he was checking me out years later he thinks I'm hot and is checking me out so I composed myself after I got off the plane and I walked over to him and I said do you know my name and he said yes I do your name's Bree and I said do you realize what you did in middle school you made me not want to wake up in the morning you ruined my middle school life and those years you made it so tough for me and he didn't even apologize because he's still a big jerk but you know what now he's a big loser he doesn't have like his little gang of buddies in PE to back him up anymore he's a big loser and he's done nothing with his life and he's balding and totally gross so you know what I win that moment was one of the best moments in life when I could look back on that loser that made fun of me and say you are nothing. I'm more of a man than you'll ever be and more of a woman than you'll ever get. I seriously told him that. And that's a quote from Rent, which is one of my favorite plays ever. And I told him off in this big airport and I said everything that I wanted to say when I was a kid, as an adult, and I humiliated him in front of a hundred people in an airport. Sometimes the underdog really does win and I promise you it gets better. Two of the girls that I taught in my very, very first group teaching modeling acting have stayed in touch with me, and their names are Stephanie and Jamie. And I just want to say, I know that you think things really, really do suck right now, but it does get better, I promise. And when people are bullying you and calling you names, you have to think of it like this. What can they do to you, in all honesty? Can they fail you in school? No, they don't control your grades. Can they fire you from your job? No, they don't control your money. So why care? Why care what people think of you? I always march to the beat of my own drummer, to the music in my own parade. And at the end of the day, it would hurt my feelings, but I wouldn't care because I knew that I was destined for bigger and better things than them. And that's what you have to know in the bottom of your soul, deep down in your heart, I am destined for bigger and better. And you know what? One of these days, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to look down on these losers who have the worst job ever, who don't have successful lives, and I'm going to think, you made fun of me. It will happen for you. I promise that things will get better and you will have that moment of shining glory. And if all else fails, 
what I used to do when I was a kid is I would think, I'm a duck. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. You know why? Because when it rains on a duck, you know what happens? It just rolls right off their back. And that's how you have to think of it. Let those mean, mean, nasty words just roll right off their back. Because in the end, who cares what they think of you? Maybe that boy won't ask you out, but you know what? There's always another one. There's always the next guy that's going to think that you are the most wonderful thing ever. There's this line in Juno, and he says that the guy that's made for you is going to think the sun shines out of your butt. This is a personal video for Stephanie and Jamie. I love you girls. You girls inspire me to keep doing what I do. You inspire me to be a better actor. You inspire me to make videos. And I want to personally thank you girls. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being my students. And I will always be there for you. And this extends to my viewers on YouTube. If you guys ever need advice or need someone to talk to or need a friend, I will be that friend for you. And I mean that. Send me a letter in my inbox. I have an email, it's brie at beautyguruforyou.com. Email me, I will be there for you. I want to be everyone's big sister that's being bullied because there's no use in being upset. There's no use in cutting yourself over it or trying to end your life. You do have a friend. You are not alone. And I will always be there for my friends and my subscribers. Thank you for watching, guys. And in the bottom bar, I really do want a conversation on ways to get over bullying. If you've been bullied, I would love to hear. And with this video, we can start a community together and completely get over bullying. It really, really does get better. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.